We have with us today Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Deputy Director General for Programs at the World Health Organization. She is the first Indian to hold WHO's second highest rank. A reputed clinical scientist, she is a globally recognized researcher on tuberculosis and HIV. Welcome Soumya to our show. Thank you very much Soba uh, for this opportunity and, and for highlighting this important uh, topic which really affects all of us both in the TB field but also more generally and you've already mentioned the huge burden of AMR currently and you know the, the number of deaths it causes starting from newborns dying of uh, antibiotic resistant infections to people infected with, uh, with TB and MDR TB and so on. There's, it's good that there's been a lot of global attention and as you know that the UN Secretary General even set up a high level committee to uh, an interagency coordination group to look at AMR and this report will be submitted back to the UN Secretary General in May 2019. Uh, WHO hosts the Secretariat and we are uh, part of the tripartites, the WHO, the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization and the OIE which is International Organization for Animals working together along with a number of independent experts and member states to really look at what can be done very holistically uh, in, in the area of AMR. Uh, WHO has uh, something called GLASS, which is a surveillance system for antibiotic uh, resistance. And last year, the report had data from 22 countries. I'm happy to say this year, I think we will have more than 50 countries uh, that are providing data. And this will sort of form a baseline and help us to track progress. As far as um, the interventions are concerned, I think we need to act on several fronts simultaneously. One very important element is the use of uh, an implementation of in infection prevention and control in healthcare settings, starting from primary healthcare settings to tertiary hospitals, having guidelines for the use of antibiotics so that all healthcare workers follow uh, standard guidelines, whether they are in the private sector or in the public sector, and reserve the use of, of the latest antibiotics for where it's really needed. Veterinary and agricultural uh, use of antibiotics really needs to be stopped in terms of using them as growth promoters or even for prevention of disease and, and use them only for treatment where it's needed. And also to reserve the use of certain antibiotics, you know that WHO has a classification of antibiotics in three categories. And the last category are the ones that need to be kept in reserve. It's called the aware classification of antibiotics. So the ones that are in the reserve category should really not be used uh, for animal use to be reserved for humans. And, and lastly, the environmental aspects, which is really the the production facilities and the disposal of antibiotics so that they're not contaminating our uh, water and soil and, and so on and, and, and spreading the resistance mutations to bacteria which are in the environment. Now just a couple of words on TB and uh, uh, drug resistance in TB of course is something that has been monitored for much much well before AMR really became of global importance and so we have data going back to the 70s and 80s it's very clear that in TB, the drug resistance uh, is of two kinds. One is primary, which uh, if I get TB from somebody who has drug resistant TB, I get those bacteria and get infected. That's primary drug resistance, that's increasing. And secondary drug resistance or acquired is when if I'm a patient with TB and I'm on the wrong combination of drugs, or if I'm not taking the right doses or I'm irregular, then I develop resistance. I start with sensitive bacteria and then I go on and develop resistance. So this is now being addressed through WHO actually um, making guidelines and saying that everyone who has suspected TB must get a molecular diagnostic test or a test for drug resistance right in the beginning so that the person, the patient gets the right combination of drugs. And secondly, uh, now that we have two new drugs, uh, Vadaquilin and Delaminid, that have been developed in the last few years, we have come out with uh, guidelines very recently. There's a rapid communication that's been put out about the use of, of these new drugs. But I think what's also very important to say is that 
Not only should patients have the right diagnosis made and appropriate treatment given, but there need to be support for that patient to stay on treatment. We know that treatment for TB is long, and treatment for drug-resistant TB is even longer, can be anything from 18 to 24 months. And so patient support, counseling, uh, peer support, um, and if they need nutrition and other kinds of social support are absolutely critical to ensure that we do not go on amplifying this development of drug resistance. Thank you. You know, uh, as we need for new drugs and TB, say we are talking of tuberculosis, need for new antibiotics, and we have the new two new drugs, Bedaculin and Delaminate. Do you think we need to have very special safeguards to be put in fl- place for the cautious use of these new drugs and new antibiotics so that uh, the bacteria does not become resistant to them after some time? Is that fear there? And uh, are there enough safeguards in place, particularly with special reference to these two drugs in TB? Uh, As you said, WHO has put safeguards in place and how do we ensure that uh, at the country level they are being met just to prevent that resistance going to the new drugs as well? Yes, I think after 40 years, you know, we've seen a new drug for TB. So hopefully in the future, we will have more drugs developed. But I think it's very important to use the drugs we have wisely and to preserve their efficacy for as long as possible. TB bacteria are capable of developing mutations, just like other bacteria, if they are exposed to the drugs in the wrong um, dose or for insufficient uh, time. And so it's it's really important to use them properly, the correct dosage in the correct uh, time duration for which they need to be given. The guidelines that have been put out by WHO are very clear about the use of these drugs and also they have to be used with the right companion drugs. So TB is one organism which can never be treated with a single drug or even with two drugs. You need a combination of three to four highly effective drugs. And that's why it's so important to know the resistance profile of the bacteria before starting treatment. While on the one hand, we need to safeguard these drugs to make sure that they are effective at least for the next couple of decades. At the same time, it should not be so restrictive that people who need them are not getting them. So we have to strike the right balance and make this drug accessible to every patient who needs it now. And that's why the new guidelines today really talk about replacing injectable with Bedaquilin because we know that a lot of patients become deaf because of the use of injectables for prolonged periods. So again, I want to emphasize that the patient-centered care is very important. While it is a public health program and we need a public health approach, every patient is important. And within the public health program, we need to ensure that we are able to stay with every patient, to track them, to monitor them, to make sure that they complete a full course of treatment and without developing you know, too many side effects. And if we're able to do that, then we can really protect these drugs for a long time to come. A lot of hopes are pinned on the forthcoming UNHLM on TB. Uh, how do you see uh, this high level meeting accelerating the fight to end TB? Uh, in what ways, according to you, will it be helpful? I can think of at least a few ways in which I think this high level meeting will be very helpful. For the first time, we are going to have over 45 heads of state um, speak at this event on TB. This is the first time ever at the UN General Assembly where heads of state will actually commit, make statements uh, of commitment. So already we are seeing the accountability. And we're also, the the outcome document has also proposed that there be a national accountability mechanism, which means that every head of state is going to commit and be accountable for progress on TB. So this is unprecedented. Secondly, we hope that this will also help to mobilize more funding, funding both for TB programs and for TB research and innovation. We desperately need new diagnostics, better diagnostics, shorter and better treatment regimens, and and, and, and hopefully a vaccine uh, that would prevent TB in the long run. So, so more investment into TB research and innovation, particularly from middle-income countries and from the high TB burden countries, this must come. Similarly, more domestic resources for, for TB programs, there should be a commitment. And, uh, and thirdly, I think we will have a huge amount of uh, 
uh, awareness that this event will create, bringing together civil society, patient voices, um, political commitment, as well as the, the experts on TB. Um, and it's going to propose uh, that a follow-up report be um, submitted to the UN General Assembly in 2020 and then in 2023. Uh, and you know, commitments have been made as to the numbers of patients being treated or number of patients being put on preventive treatment uh, at the global level. But this will also be translated for each country into what does each country have to do in order for the global goals to be achieved. So I think it will focus attention. It will uh, also tell each country what uh, they have to do to, to address the burden. And I think um, countries like India, which have already shown high level political commitment to accelerating the, the end of TB, it will be very important to hear from these countries that have already done a lot and have already committed to, to doing more. So I think that it's, it is going to be hopefully a turning point in the fight against. Friends, TB. you were listening to Dr. Soumya Swaminathan, Deputy Director General for Programs at the World Health Organization. She spoke on why it is urgently important to control antimicrobial resistance that is having a devastating impact on global health. For more information, please log on to www.citizen-news.org.